Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in today's video we're going to be spicing up the playing field a little bit. We're going to be creating an object such that if the player collides with this object it'll inverse the controls. Now it's actually quite straightforward. We have a lot of what we need. We just need to flip it upside down. So what I've done is I've created a sprite here. I've added it in here called SPR inverse. Um, we're going to make a twirl using its image angle. It's quite straightforward. So let's go ahead and actually create that object. Uh, objects, we're going to say create object, obj inverse. Okay, give it the sprite we want, which is this guy. Um, he does have the same parent of the obstacle, this guy. And one thing I want to do is, obviously I only want this object to rotate. I don't want the obstacles, all obstacles to rotate. So as you can see here, it says, that it's inheriting from a parent. But I also want to override that inheritance to add our own piece of code. So I'm gonna double click this. Um, actually, I can go inherit event, there we go. Cool, now it says that it's inheriting some but not all aspects. Or more accurately, some aspects and then some. So I'm gonna get rid of all that. Um, we can get rid of this comment, we know what it does. It's gonna inherit from the parent, which I believe we've got an obstacle, the parent step tells it to move. Yeah, that's the movement. And then here I'm just gonna say image angle plus equals, I think 10 should be fine. That'll make it rotate. Now, because our dinosaur is colliding with this inverse, I wanna make sure that we can keep track of what state the game is in. Um, so I'm going here to the room into the creation code and we're gonna add a global event here called global inverse. Uh, it's gonna be set to false on start. Uh, just like game over and b day over here and game maker is telling me that it's not in use which is really cool now let's go ahead and create some of these we're going to go to the controller i can exit the game world and into the create event we can copy this paste it here start creating inverse obstacles and we're going to say alarm three i'm going to say seven so that we encounter one within seven seconds of starting you can play around with this number as it gets respawned, um, just make sure that it doesn't overlap one of these other ones, otherwise you might get undesirable effects. Okay, so we're creating the first one, and then I'm gonna add an event, alarm three, and in here I'm going to say instance create layer, um, it's the room width plus 100, so 100 pixels out of the room. This is a very important line um, to take note of if you're experiencing weird issues where the objects you're creating aren't in well aren't reaching the view you might be putting them too low so they are actually moving right to left but you just can't see them because of the y-axis so make sure you've got your room height set to room height minus something here so that'll be within the view and it's going to be on the instances layer like that and it's going to be object inverse cool now let's think about uh, what we want to happen here. We don't always want one of these to, to be created. What happens if it's your birthday? What happens if our dinosaur has interacted with the cake? It's going to be a, a bit lame if we um, have the inverse also during such a special occasion. So I'm going to add a condition here to the top. Let's say that if it's the game over, we don't want to create another one. If it's the birthday, uh, but only if it's the birthday and you're not already inversed, because if you are inversed and you get the birthday cake, it's not gonna, it's not gonna heal that inverse. I think the inverses still need to be spawned in until you interact with it to undo it. I think that's good, and then no more will be spawned after that. Global dot game over. There we go. Or, and here I'm gonna say, well, if it's your birthday and you're not already inversed then we can exit okay so if it's the end of the game or it's our birthday and we are not inverse so we are right way up <clears throat> so our keys aren't back to front then we can exit but you know if if we're still running the game and it isn't our birthday then it'll keep doing this and if it isn't the end of the game and it is our birthday but we're inversed it will then spawn one of these and then we want it to work its magic again. I'm going to say, once again, times seven. 
Okay, so now let's manage what happens when our dinosaur collides with one of these inverse objects. That's here in the collision event. <clears throat> now this is looking a little messy right now. I think I'm going to clean it up while we here, do a little bit of refactoring. We're actually going to say if other object index uh, equals object cake, uh, it'll be easier to follow the flow. Instead of being, using if and else's, we can just grab that, paste it in here, and I'll say exit. So the exit code will jump out of the script as soon as it is hit. So if we interact with a cake, it's going to set some things and then it's just going to leave. It's not going to hit this end bit. Um, and then here we can say, well, if we haven't interacted with a cake, well, then this means death over here. So I can remove this if. I can remove that last brace. I can change the indentation. This means death. It's quite straightforward. It's either birthday or death. And because of that, in between birthday and death, I can now add if other dot object index equals equals object inverse. We'll need an underscore there. Then I can say, well, global inverse equals the opposite of global inverse. So if it's true, it's false. If it's false, it's true. And I can take this with other instance destroy and also the exit. Cool. So it's if I interact with a cake, it's birthday, and then it exits. So it doesn't run the end of this. If it's not the birthday cake, and it's the inverse, it's going to change the inverse property from false to true, true to false. Going to delete the object we're colliding with, and then exit again. Won't do this. And if it's neither of those two, it means death. And then this happens, which is as it did before. OK, so that's great. We've got our inverse object being spawned in and we are toggling the value that changes. Now we're not actually acting upon this value um, just yet, which is what we need to do now. So in order to do that, we need to explore these scripts over here, the detect key, ground check, jump check, all these guys. These handle inputs from the user which cause the instance of our object, Dino, to move. So this is the manipulation right here. So let's start with detect key. I think I need to get a duck key alternative um, because there's a jump key alternative so it makes sense to have one of these I'm gonna say VK alt for that guy now these happen to be the keys when there's normal gameplay no inverse so I'm gonna wrap this all in if not global inverse okay so this should work as before that needs to be duck key alt Okay, indent that. Then here I'm going to say else. What is the alternative going to be like? The inverse. Okay, well, if I copy all of these, paste them in, and we switch them around. So, for example, the jump key now becomes VK down and VK alt. And the duck key now becomes VK space and VK up. So you see that it's the, it's the inverse. So now in order to jump, we have to press the down key or the alt key and if we want to duck we have to press space so that can really mess with your mind if you kind of forget whether you are inverse or not okay we're going to save that now we've introduced this duck key alt it's probably a good idea to make sure the rest of these scripts utilize it i think it's in the ground check here we go duck key or duck key alt and where else here we go not duck key i think i need to say and not duck key come on show me alt there we go i'm gonna wrap this in braces just to make the readability a little better and then here if the player wants to jump uh and not duck key or duck key alt very cool and the rest i think is okay let's go into jump check yeah nothing we have to worry about here collision nope that's just for the block set sprite very good. Yeah, nothing else we have to have to change. I think that's about everything we need. So let's fire this up and uh, see what happens. Okay, so space is jump, down is duck. Okay, so let's see if we can find an inverse. There's one. Ooh, space is duck. Oh, so that's immediately, immediately screwed. Let's try again. Space is jump. Okay, I'm gonna use up and down. It's a little easier. 
up and down. Okay, so down is duck. Okay, now up is going to be duck. Oof, there we go. And down is going to be jump. That's already messing with my mind. I need to find one. And now up again is jump. So you got to keep with the times here. So that one doesn't get confused. Now it's my birthday. Now check this out. Okay, so down is jump. Up is duck. And now if we hit another one, there should be another one spawned. See? Now up is again jump. Back to normal. But now another one won't spawn because it's our birthday. Nothing can ruin our special day. See? I think about seven seconds has passed. No inverse. Pretty cool stuff. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, please check out my Patreon link below in the description. If you have any other suggestions on what we can do to this dino game to make it more exciting, please let me know in the comments or send me a PM. The project files for this video can be found in the description, as well as links to other sorts of material that will help you make the perfect game. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.